let's take our Bibles this morning and turn to 2 Kings chapter 2. Boy, I love this story and wish I could give the proper time to it that it needs, but we're just going to highlight some things and uh, try to communicate the, the message so that you can think about it and uh, meditate upon it and the Holy Spirit can guide you through. It is the Word of God. And so, <clears throat> 2 Kings chapter 2, and it's a, a little bit lengthier passage. It's, I'm going to read 14 verses, so uh, I ask for your patience on that. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, thou, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall, so, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. It came to pass... As they still went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'll bless this subject this morning. I pray that you'll uh, help us to be sensitive uh, to the reading and the preaching of the Word of God. And Lord, we're very needy today. If we could only recognize our need and and uh, seek the leadership and direction of your Holy Spirit. Lord, our lives could be changed. I just pray that you'll uh, help us to be open to what you have today. And Lord, help us to put aside the thoughts and cares of this life and things that are happening in this our time. And I pray that you'll do a work in our lives. Please bless the message in Jesus' name. Amen. This is quite a story. I want to talk to you today about... Uh, the subject, miracles for some, but not for others. Miracles for some, but not for others. Now, what we have here is we have Elisha, or Elijah, he's, he's, he's at the end of his days. He's getting ready to go to heaven. His time is about up. He knows it. It's interesting that when people are about ready to uh, leave this life and go into the next life, they, they have an acute awareness that that's getting ready to take place. And so... Um, the old man doesn't want to be a burden to the young man, so he he try, kind of urges him to uh, just stay. I can take this last part of my journey by myself, and Elisha says, I'm not going to leave. 
and um, so he's he's making his last round from his circuit. And uh, there are other prophets, just like Elijah or Elisha. Um, they're young men. They are uh, in training, and and uh, and you can see the difference though between Elisha and these other young men. They're just not really concerned about Elijah. I think they think that probably his time is up and his life is over and there's just no more miracles left in the old man. And so what happens though, there is another miracle and Elisha is there to witness it. But these other 50 sons of the prophets, they miss out completely, completely on the miracle. And so I want to talk about this subject, miracles for some, but not others. Now there are three types of people in the world today and in this story, those who make things happen, those who watch it happen. And the third group is those who never even knew it happened. Again, three types of people, those who make things happen, those who watch it happen, and those who simply never even knew it happened. And we have all three in this story. However, miracles are still happening. Uh, there are some who didn't realize it. They didn't know what took place. They didn't see it. They were, they were standing too far off. See, they were not engaged. And so this, this idea of miracle work, miracles are happening, but only for some and not others. And I want to encourage you today to have a, a holy desire for God to do miracles in your life. And uh, so this miracle work, it's happening whether you know it or not. Some will get in on it, some won't. They'll miss it. It'll happen and uh, it'll be gone forever. So I believe this morning I'm going to put my finger on the reason why miracles happen for some and not for others. First of all, I'm going to give you uh, several points here why miracles don't happen for a lot of people. Uh, number one, people get bored with routine. That's just, that's normal. People get bored with routine. Elijah was a circuit riding preacher. Um, he would go, uh, he had this routine. So he would go to Gilgal, then he'd go to Bethel, then he'd go to Jericho and he'd repeat, go back to Gilgal, then he'd make his round to Bethel and then Jericho and he would repeat that same routine but this is his last round, and it appears everybody in this story knows it. Um, think about this, okay, this matter of getting bored with routine. I don't think I have to convince you, but um, we all get bored with the humdrum of everyday life. But you, you may recall when God told his people that he was gonna feed them manna. He said every day, before the sun comes up, you got to get out there on the ground and pick up the manna. Because when the sun comes up and gets hot, it will melt that manna just like it evaporates dew on the ground. And so people had to get up. But, you know, some of those people got a little bit lazy and they decided, you know, even though they had God's command, they decided, well, we'll wait till noontime or two o'clock in the afternoon. They went out to get manna and uh, no more manna. And so they realized God was trying to get them into a routine. And some still didn't like the idea of a routine. So on uh, Friday, they decided, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get enough for uh, three days. And uh, it, it didn't last. Uh, it, 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 got, it, it began to spoil and worms began to eat it. And so, again, they figured out right away that God was trying to get them into a routine. And here, Elijah, he has this routine. It, it goes to... Uh, Gilgal, then Bethel, and then Jericho, and then Gilgal, and Bethel, and Jericho. And he makes these rounds, and everybody knows his routine. He's just an old man with a routine. And uh, but you know that that gets too too old for some people. They don't they don't like that. They want change. They want something new. And uh, I I recall the story in Genesis where Abraham told his loyal servant Eliezer to go find a wife for his son, Isaac. And he gave him some instruction. He said, now Eliezer, um, I don't want you to take a wife of the, of the, of the land in which we dwell. I want you to go back to my homeland and uh, whatever it takes, I want you to make a promise to me that you'll find a wife and you'll do exactly as I say. And Eliezer said, perhaps the woman will not be willing to go with me. And Abraham said, well, if that be the case, you're free if you're relieved of this vow. And so, you know, Eliezer goes on his way. And, you know, what he does is he prays. He says, dear Lord, 
you know my master and, and his faithfulness, would you make my journey prosperous? And I am working for him. I'll do whatever it takes, but would you make my journey prosperous? And um, before he'd done praying, the wife of Isaac shows up, Rebecca, offers to water his cam camels, and he is just amazed. And when he begins to testify to Rebecca's father, he made this statement. He said, I being in the way, the Lord led me. Well, what way was that? It was Abraham's way, the old man. It's just, that's the way that Abraham found success. And Abraham prayed about it. He says, God, this is what I'm asking you. He knew how to get answers to prayer. And Eliezer could have done his own thing, but he understood this, this system of routine. See, no matter how boring it might get, um, there is some success, some reason to that. And I want to say today that the reason miracles don't happen for some people is because they get bored too quick with routine. They don't stay long enough for fruit to come. They don't stay long enough for a harvest to, to uh, appear. And so, um, number one, people get bored with routine, so they, they don't get to see the miracles. Secondly, people lose faith and begin to doubt. Now, here's the obvious. Elijah's ministry is over. He knows it. Elisha knows it. The sons of the prophets know it. They're all talking about it. They said, don't you realize that today is Elijah's last day? He said it was, and, and um, he's going to go as far as he can do, go till he drops dead. And you understand that it's over, Elisha. Elisha says, I know. Just keep your words to yourself and your thoughts to yourself. Hold your peace. And Elisha says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the end. I don't know how long the end is. And um, I, I've, I've sat with people before who who uh, took their last breath. And sometimes it might take a day or two days. And the nights are long. And, you know, when the doctor calls the family and says, I think you ought to come. I think your mother, your father, they're not going to make it through the night. And uh, when people come to the end, they, they kind of know that. And this was... This was obvious. His ministry is over. And they probably felt there are no more miracles left in this old man. They'd seen Elijah do miracles. They probably said, we've heard all of his sermons. He's repeating himself now. Yep, that's part of the routine. He's repeating himself. I'm sure somebody said, he needs to be put out to pasture. That's, that's a thing that they say out here in the country when an old old cow or old horse is not good for riding anymore, not good for working anymore. Just let them get out and graze and, and, uh, until they die. And, and when they say that about a put person, put them, let's put them out in the pasture. Um, I didn't say put them out in the pasture. I said put them out in the pasture. Years ago, we had a lady in our church who called me pasture. And every time I was with her, I was looking where I would step just to make sure I wouldn't step in something. But... Uh, they probably thought we'll put this we'll put this old guy out in the pasture, and um, but people begin to lose their faith and they begin to doubt. I believe that these sons of the prophet, in their minds and in their hearts, they were convinced that Elijah had no more miracles. His ministry was over. We know that it was not over. You see, people get bored with routine. Secondly, they lose faith and begin to doubt. Thirdly, people get they let distancing replace closeness. Boy, that's unique, isn't it? They let distancing replace closeness. As religious as these uh, preacher boys were, these up-and-coming prophets, as religious as they were, they were okay being distant from the old paths and the old prophet. They didn't really need to uh, stay attached to him anymore. Uh, they knew it was his last moments, and none of them really even cared to be there. Um, but they, they, uh, they begin to distance themselves, and they actually believe that it was the end of an era. See, after the old man goes, um, things can change. And but I'll say to you that people still get saved, and even during this time, I, I realize that uh, soul winning and and witnessing to people is is uh, it. People think that that's you can't do it like you used to, but you still can. People still can be saved. It's not the end of an era of people getting saved. I also believe revival can still take place. I believe that God is working in the hearts of people. I believe God can still break a hard heart. 
I believe that God can still change people's lives. I believe that marriages can still be rekindled. I'm talking about marriages that are on the rocks, mar marriages that are having trouble, and especially during this time when people find themselves around the same people all the time, they get a little irritable, but I still believe that marriages can be rekindled. I also believe wayward children can still come back to God. And I believe that God can still heal a nation. If you are witnessing fallout all around in your life and in your world, things aren't the same as they used to be, God can still heal a nation. And when you quit believing that, doubt begins to darken your world and the clouds begin to come in like a, like a storm in your life and you won't believe what you once believed. There's a fourth thing. This is why I believe people don't see miracles because miracles are happening every day. But another reason why people don't see miracles is because they believe, I'm sorry, my fourth point is one person believed in the passing of the Spirit. And uh, But I, my fourth thing why I believe that some people don't see miracles is they don't believe in the passing of the Spirit. Now, you know, Elisha never mentioned this to the sons of the prophet. He never said this to his, his preacher boys, his contemporaries. He never said, hey guys, listen, I think I'm going to get something today. I think something's going to get passed today. And I don't want to miss out on that. But see, Elisha believed in the passing of the Spirit. And he wanted to follow the old man to his last second, see. Um, as I said earlier, when a, a parent or a grandparent is on their deathbed and the doctor calls the family and says, I think you need to come down. Um, I don't believe he'll make it through the night. And uh, they call the family in. That, by the way, that statement means different things to different people. Um, when they say they're going to call the family in. Some people think, well, he can last another two weeks or he may not make it through the night. That calling the family in means different things to different people. But um, Elisha believed in the power of God through a man, not in the power of a man. Did you get that? He believed in the power of God through a man, not in the power of a man. We don't believe in man worship, but God does express his power through men who are surrendered to him. And Elisha believed that. See, that's why he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? because he wanted the God of Elijah. He didn't necessarily want Elijah. He couldn't be Elijah. Elijah was a hairy man. Elisha was a smooth man. Everybody knew that. He wasn't asking to be like Elijah. He wanted the God of Elijah. And he understood how blessings were passed. Men in the Old Testament would pray, where is the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Because they understood that the Spirit of God was passed down from these men to their, their children. And uh, here he is asking, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is the God of Daniel? You might remember when the king came to the lion's den and he said, did, did thy God deliver thee, the God of Daniel? Or where is the God of my father? See, my dad loved the Lord. My dad walked with God. My dad believed in God through everything in the toughest of times. And I didn't just want to be who my dad was, but I want the God of my father. Do you even know somebody that's involved in miracle work today? Do, do you know someone who experiences the power of God in their life? Laban didn't want Jacob to leave. When Jacob had spent 20 years, seven years for one daughter, seven years for another, six years for his cattle, 20 years he'd spent with Laban. And God told Jacob in a dream at night, he said, it's it's time to go back to the promised land. You've been out here really spinning your wheels, wasting a lot of time. We need to get back to routine. We need to get back to the place of blessing. And so Joseph began to talk to Laban and Laban didn't want him to go. In fact, jo Jacob stole away in the night and Laban overtook him because Jacob had all, all his sheep and his cattle and, and his family and the little ones. He couldn't move that fast, but he wanted to get a head start because he knew that his father-in-law would not want him to go. And Laban said with his own mouth, he says, I don't want you to go for I've learned by experience how the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. Laban 
Laban knew that God's hand was upon Jacob and he wanted, he wanted to be close to Jacob so he could be part of that blessing, see? And even Potiphar, when, when he purchased Joseph from the, the uh, Ishmaelite traders, the Midianites, when, when he purchased Joseph, he began to see that God was all over Joseph and he saw that the Lord was with Joseph and he began to give Joseph more and more responsibility. And he, and it just multiple times the Bible says that he saw that the Lord was with Joseph. So today, if you're not seeing any miracles, perhaps you're too far off. You know, in the text that we read, it said that these sons of the prophets, that they were viewing afar off. Because you see, Elijah went from Gilgal to Bethel and then to Jericho but that was it. That was the end of his circuit. He wasn't going to go back again to, to uh, Gilgal. What did he do? He went down to the Jordan River. And the sons of the prophets, the Bible says, they just watched from afar off. That, that, that statement is very key. They watched from afar off, to view from afar off. But it was so far they couldn't really see what was going on. And so then Elijah and Elisha come to the Jordan River and they need to cross. And Elijah picks up his mantle and he smites the water and it parts. See, people probably thought, you know, Moses did that with the Red Sea. That'll never happen again. That was a miracle. That'll never happen again. But it happened with Elijah and he parted the waters and the two of them walked over to the other side. And then that's where the miracle took, the next miracle took place. And that was where Elijah said to Elisha, ask what you will and it'll be done. You, you stayed with me all this way. Well, by that time, the sons of the prophets, they were so far away, they couldn't see what was going on. They didn't get to see the miracle, nor did they get the transfer of the spirit of God from Elijah to Elisha. And then Elisha saw it. The chariot came down and parted the two asunder, and then it went back up, and Elijah's in the, in the chariot, and his, he, he throws his mantle back, and it falls to the ground, and he goes up in a whirlwind. And then there's Elisha all by himself and he cries out, where is the Lord God of Elijah? You see, God's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. And is there anything too hard for the Lord? Can God heal? Can God do miracles? Can God solve problems? Yes, he can. The problem is our faith has been badgered and beaten so much, we are filled with doubt now. How long has it been? since you've seen a miracle. Let me ask you this. How long has it been since you've been to an altar? You, you may say, well, I'll tell you what, during these times we haven't been able to meet like we have before and we haven't had the altar calls like we had before. You can make an altar right there on your couch. You can make an altar in your living room. You can make an altar in your vehicle. You can make an altar on a country road. You can make an altar anywhere because your heart is where you meet with God. When was the last time you wrestled with God? I'm talking you stayed with God until you knew you got an answer. I'm not talking about a five-minute prayer or a 30-minute prayer. I'm talking about where you got alone with God and you were not going to leave until you had the peace of God that God was going to do a miracle for you. It's called wrestling with God. So here's my question. Do you want in today? Do you need a miracle? You want God to prove himself in your life? Are you willing to quit viewing from afar off? Look, there's always going to be people in the house of God. There's always going to be uh, people in the family of God that are just on the outskirts. They're the fringe people. They show up for food pantry or, or they show up for dinner time or Easter and they're on the fringe. They're viewing from afar off. They're just watching to see what's going to happen. And there's some that are so far off, they never actually know what happened. But then there are those that are right there in the middle of the mix, see? Are you willing to quit viewing from afar off? Are you willing to move in closer? Like that woman who said, if I can just but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. And there were so many other people. But that woman got her miracle, you see. It's all through the word of God. I love the word of God. But really, it's up to you today. So my question is, do you, do you want to live a miraculous life? Because God is still doing miracles. For some, just not for others. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you'll convict our hearts. I pray that you'll help us not to rest. Lord, what you are doing for these 
men in the Bible and how you were transferring your spirit and how the power of God was uh, so evident. And we found out that Elisha asked, he, he, uh, he, he, he asked for a double portion. And we find through careful study that he did 18 miracles and Elijah did nine. And he got that double portion. And God, I pray that you'll put a holy desire within us today to desire to see your miracles, Lord, and to have your spirit upon us. So I pray you'll bless the message, Lord. Change us, make us different. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.